Hi guys, my name is Jaris Christodou, 2019 European and National Craftathlon Champion in my age group. And in today's video, I'm going to discuss my favourite trainer at the start of the year 2020 to the end of the year. To the channel guys and if you're new to the channel welcome please like and subscribe so today's video i'm going to discuss my well my favorite train at the beginning of the year and then what changed towards the end of the year did i like something different so first thing i want to talk about my favorite trainer or well, one of my favorite trainers and is the roadhawk 2. now i've been using this um a lot um throughout the years the roadhawks and just this this one was a fantastic um trainer for speed i use it in speed um speed runs and um it, at long distance like half marathons and marathons so this is still one of my go-to shoes um but it looks like it appears that asics may have discontinued this trainer but um so i bought loads of just um, a few just in case they are um um, at bargain prices but this is one of my favorite trainers and this was my favorite trainer at the beginning of the year now i move on to at the same period of the year i um that was my race trainer for racing in uh run running races don't do many running races now the gel noosa 12s they were my um my go-to shoes for tri the triathlon year for 220 now unfortunately we know covid um struck and i didn't um get many races i didn't ha well do many races but i still managed to get a few giraffelons and a um triathlon and i did use this shoe now i love this shoe it was a fantastic shoe and um, it was fast it was better than the previous models and um, I, like, I did do a review about it, but I mentioned that this was quite quick and it had the tri laces and it just felt really quick. Now, this was, um, I think, just as good as the Roadhawks, but I would prefer to use these um, in a triathlon. And the plus there was uh, really nice colours. Now, we're going to go on to my long run shoe before we go on to a key changer, which really did change my opinion of shoes of the year. Now, my long run shoe. Um, is the Dynaflights and um, I absolutely love the Dynaflights. I've had them from the first model onwards and um, they have always been a perfect long run shoe for me. They're comfortable, they, um, they're lightweight and they, they just feel really good on. Now, these ones felt a little bit better um, than the previous model because of the, um, the shoelaces were slightly thinner and lightweight and um, the material is a bit different as well, but it did feel an uh, all-round great shoe. Now, one problem I didn't think it was that they were the problem I had was there's a bit more excess um, material there, but it did keep you comfortable and it didn't cause any problems for me. Now, this was my go-to long run shoe. I'd run with this all the time on my long runs, and as you can see, they've been well used, still using them, and they and they're quite robust. Now, as in long runs. My opinion has not changed at all because these are a great shoe for the long runs. So I'm going to go on to the, the shoe that actually changed my opinion. And um, there's the war of carbon shoes going around at the moment, and it's the Meta Racer. Now, the Meta Racer, um, I wasn't sure at first with all the hype and everything, and I couldn't wait to get my hands on this pair of trainers. And um, this is by far the fastest shoe I've ever used. And the reason it's the um, fastest shoe I've ever used is because it's got a carbon plate built in. Um, it was designed for the to come out for the, I think, I believe the Paris Marathon, but that actually got axed and then it came out later on in the year. Um, and you can see it's got Tokyo because it was going to represent the Tokyo, Tokyo Olympic Games, which unfortunately got cancelled due to COVID. But... What I like about this is it's it's lightweight, it breathes, it gets the water out, like there's the air vent there that gets the water out and it's an air vent as well. Um, it's super lightweight and um, here again, really thin material, super light. Um, all this is light, it's 
it's robust as well. Um, I've got two pairs of these. This is the second pair. I haven't used this yet, but the previous pair that I, um, I've been using a lot in my races was just fantastic. And um, as I mentioned in previous reviews that it, I thought it was gonna be a bit slippery, but I used this on a 10K run where it was absolutely pouring down and the whole entire path was completely waterlogged and I managed a 29 second PB. So and definitely quick. Now, uh, what I found as well, I felt like I was bouncing along and that in my training sessions, I was running consistently faster than I ever have been. Um, quite, a, quite a considerable um, chunk faster per rep and I was running faster with these um, doing 1k reps um, than I would do on a track so I was running uh, quicker. Now I used these in um, my uh, duathlons towards the end of the year and um, because you had two pairs of trainers and it was easier to, um, I didn't have to change the lace and a bit lazy like that so I didn't have to put tri laces on there but um, I they were super quick and I actually really liked them. Now, what I did notice when I did put back on the Gel Noosa Tries 12, like on the Giraffe I did find that they were a bit more heavier and they didn't have a bounce. Now, I was flying along and I was quicker with these on um, for the race. So, has, has, um, so what has changed my opinion um, over the year is that technology has obviously come a long way and has changed. Now, if you look at um, the way that that sort of shoe is, that's, that is a quick shoe. Um, compared to that, you can see that that's even a quick, um, even quicker. So technology has come a long way. Um, Non-carbon versus carbon. Of course, we know there's a massive like um, craze about these and hype about these uh, carbon shoes, and they're gonna be here forever, to be, uh, well, for a while, unless they get banned. And um, you can see that everyone's getting PBs. Now, I, 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 although this is a fantastic race shoe, um, I have mentioned in a previous video in my review that I would not use this um, as much in training. I only use it leading up to the race, maybe a week or two weeks before, but um, in the speed sessions. I wouldn't use it in long runs. I think if I use it in long runs, my um, feet would get uh, cut up. Um, it's meant to be ideal for, ha um, for half marathons and marathons. I know friends that did PBs with these on um, in marathons, uh, but I believe that if I was to carry on with these, they would... Um, my feet would get sore and that's why my still my go-to shoe is the Dynaflight 4. So I'm looking forward to seeing what technology wise comes out in 221 because every year you look back everything's changed like in, in bikes, bikes have changed, um, the brake pads have changed for example, um, swimming technology's changed like goggle technology um, and, and running shoes technology as well. So you look at the, uh, the first carbon plate shoes to come out to the latest ones, the, the, new, the latest ones obviously um, quite a, a quicker. So for me to keep being the best and to achieve my goal of be, uh, getting on the podium for the 221 um, European Triathlon Sprint Championships, um, technology is important for me and for me to have the right equipment and um, this is certainly a way forward for me. So guys, thanks for watching. What, um, what has changed your opinion uh, throughout the year in regards to shoes? Now, were you like me, were not too sure about carbon plate shoes, but now think that actually they are worth it. If, if you wanna get that PB, you can get that PB because they save a little bit of energy um, and make you more efficient. Um, so yeah, let, drop a, um, a comment on the, um, in the comments box. And please like and subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching. In the first place, the gold medalist and the uh, champions of the uh, this age group category, Henrietta Tarasevich and Yanis Christodoulos.